Yo everyone, today for Halloween I have something very special for you and this is gonna be an analysis of possibly the closest game ever played. This is absolutely hardcore. Now what you're gonna see, it's absolute, it was absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. Now, first of all, what's the map? The, map's, the map is Rice Chancellery in Berlin. It's the only five objective conquest map in the game. Which makes it for many players the the most fun objective, map, uh, the most fun conquest map. Now here you can see we started on the right side or on the south, no matter depending on how you look at it, and we have the left, uh, the left A objective and the right D objective currently obstructed by our soldiers. The central objective is B, and the enemies start with C and E. Now I took a squad with an engineer, which every of my squads have to play, uh, build a fast rally and with a radio man to do a first artillery strike on E because if I do it perfectly in time I'm gonna hit a couple of soldiers there because they still have to... the, the artillery strike takes around 20 seconds to start and the enemies also take around 15 seconds 15 to 20 seconds to capture so unless they run away instantly which they can't because they can't teleport I'm gonna get a couple of hits Usually it's very hard to get really reliable hits and conquest maps because the players are very split up, unlike with Invasion. But here you see, oh, four kills is actually okay. For conquest it's very okay. If it was five or six I would be actually very happy. Now, okay, now since my team is capturing the first two objectives, I'm already running to the center objective and I expect enemies to be here. Why can I? Very simple. Because the... I built a rally point and I spent a couple of seconds artillery striking and I spent a couple of seconds repositioning so people who instantly rush to the center are gonna be much earlier than I am here so I can expect some first fighting okay we killed one squad now well yeah this is the point I can't be sure if the one squad only had six soldiers or more <laughs> and if I see an eighth soldier very likely there's another squad so yeah now, how was the start? The start was, well, strategically speaking, if my team built more rallies, it would have been great. But right now, I'm the only rally point builder. Yeah, we can see here. By the way, I constantly look at the scores to see how many rally points do people build. The enemies haven't built a single one. So from that, we can deduce that they were fast pushing to the center. And that they're going to be fast pushing to our own objectives now. We had... Theoretically two rally point builders. I hope at least the second one also built one The one the sixth person with one engineer point. Well, let's hope once again in conquest The most important thing to do is building rally points because you win conquest by spawn pressure Because the more spawn pressure you have The easier it is to hold the objectives and if you hold objectives You don't even need to get kills because the enemy is gonna burn out with because you win conquest by having more objectives <laughs> Not by killing more people so, yeah, of course it helps, but it's not the main, the main thing. Also, if the enemy has more objectives, he forces you to, to do stuff that he wants, because you are forced now to capture, and then you're automatically in a bad position. So, yeah. Now, obviously, I'm trying to get back B. Now, here's the big thing. B is, as the center objective, the most contested one. I can decide to either fight for the most contested one, which is, which is going to be hard to capture, but once you capture it, it's going to be easier to hold. So it's a high risk, high reward thing. Or I can just go take the easy ones, meaning the outside E. Or, yeah, meaning the outside objective E. Or just run around this long uh, way here and just take C and forget about B. This is also a way... Now, obviously, this has the disadvantages of here that we are exposed, running around so much, and that it takes time. But, yeah, now, usually, as you can see here, okay, we were lucky, we captured B, so there's no decision to be made, we can just keep pushing forward. Right now, the enemies still have the majority, you see on the top of the screen, our line is burning down. And, but now we're capturing. So, whenever you don't see any enemies, take some time to improve your position, meaning reloading your soldiers, Healing your soldiers, building ammo boxes and dropping mines, building barbed wire and building sandboxes. Because every second you're not fighting, you can do something else that's going to improve your yeah your game. So yeah, now we're capturing C. 
The problem is, the enemy started taking away our own positions. This is where the big problem started. This is where the big problem started. And I captured C, but apparently my teammates didn't do anything and we lost everything. So, and C, since C is the absolute home base of the enemies, we can assume they're gonna have it back very closely. So yeah, now what am I gonna do? Well, first of all, I need to, well, if I wait for C, I'm just, I'm wasting time. Since the enemies captured A and D, I know they're gonna be there, and if I'm lucky, they will run around, and I can start picking them off. And okay, let's analyze the map, uh, the points, by the way. We see I am basically the only player in the team who does the killing. It looks like we have some more ready point builders, but I'm afraid to say most people who have engineer points just build ammo boxes and not ready points. So I can't even assume that. And the enemies have one person who is a marshal who has 11 engineer points. I'm very sure he was building ready points. So right now the only good thing for us is that I can expect we have more ready points than the enemies. If you give this situation enough time, we're gonna get ahead inevitably. But right now we're getting completely destroyed. Also, the enemy has one player over one has basically two 1,000 point players. We only have one, so this is already not that good. So, yeah, we have theoretical advantages that we still need to realize. But besides that, it looks horrible. All right, now since the since the right side is completely dominated by the enemies, the outside area between A and, and E is completely belongs to them. And it's very open. And very open means if you start rushing in, they're gonna see you and instantly kill you. So the best thing to do is sneaking around the left side, which is usually less populated. Alright. We see here the enemies built a really nice and comfy position with sandbags. And I'm very sure there's also a ready point. Alright. Yeah, they are destroying us. At least myself. Yeah, like, um... This, yeah, this, this TNT didn't land as I wanted. And they're still spawning, and they're still rushing. Now, where's the ready point? Yeah, there it is. And here was the sad thing. I wanted to mine it, but I got instantly shot. <laughs> I wanted to mine it, but I got shot. I hoped, like, the safe play would, would have been to shoot the... To destroy the rally point but I thought okay let's do it now here the, I dropped an anti-tank mine because I didn't think which type of soldier I had every of my soldiers has a mine instead of the uh, uh, except for the anti-tank gunner who has an anti-tank mine obviously since he's gonna run around the ways where enemies are uh, where enemy tanks are so yeah now this this won't work this was a brain fart from my side I should have just shot the the, the ready point all right now, all right, since I'm already here and my teammates uh, retook A and D, which are our home bases, uh, I have time to capture B. I have one soldier left and I can run around. Now, here I decided to return and destroy this ready point. Because, yeah, it came to my mind that <laughs> having dropped the... Wait, I'm using an entertain gunner. I just completely messed up by not shooting this, this ready point. Also, this was the only enemy ready point, which we could see from the engineer points in the stat sheet. So, yeah, this is good. Now, it's it's you can assume that the enemies, uh, that my team is gonna take back our home positions A and D, because this is where you naturally spawn close to. So, there's the pressure, the, the strongest. So, yeah, even if the enemy takes it, if the enemy isn't overwhelmingly strong, we are gonna have it back eventually. But, since the enemy has held all of the positions for a couple of seconds or even minutes, they, we really lost heart on the line. The li our line burned down really hard. Really, really hard, and you can see it, they have a big advantage. They have basically twice as much line length as we have. Yeah, this fire looks nice. It looks a little bit too generic, because I see it's like basically six times the same animation. <laughs> but besides that, it looks okay. Now, this was clearly a smart enemy, because he barbed our door and our window. This is really hard to go bad for us. Okay, now I obviously destroy it, and I'm lucky I hit these two dudes with the flamethrower, so they didn't shoot back. Alright, now this squad seems to be dead. 
yeah no more no one no one else anymore here and well now we need to recapture now obviously we need to recapture positions we need to recapture positions so our line starts uh, stops burning down and of course you want the majority so yeah obviously i'm already next to b now i could go i could try going to c which is in the top northeast you see e back there but if i go there i'm going to be shot by these dudes so <laughs> this is out of option due to the geography of the map i'm forced to to take b like, there's nothing else that makes sense yeah uh, i try i hope to shoot through this little opening with the panzer faust but the hitboxes i think don't make it possible yeah like panzer fausts and storm pistols and similar things have very strange hitboxes similar to grenade launchers so they can't shoot through tight openings yeah this is another thing the enemy did to us and I don't have the like 10 seconds to destroy this, so I'm forced to move through this corridor where they already expect us. You see, the enemies are very smart. They have one dude who really knows what he's doing, at least one, very likely more. Okay, I could have headshot the dudes, I saw their heads in the, in the sandbag holes, but I don't know why I didn't. Maybe I wanted just to check out. Yeah, I think I wanted to go here to B and start capturing because I have a, I have, I had a seven-man squad. Now, if I keep shooting there, I am wasting time uh, because we need to get the majority and to start decimating their line. And B, if I'm unlucky, my whole squad dies. So part of my squad dies, and I can't capture as quickly anymore. So yeah, since the enemy has now three times as much life as we have. We are in an extremely bad spot. We absolutely need the majority. Yeah, we need the majority for many minutes because if we don't have it, we're gonna get molested. So yeah, now we have B again, we have A again. We are losing D, but I just hope my, my team gets back D and now we can start capturing C. By the way, my strategy of not fighting paid off because I still have my six soldiers to capture. Yeah, so this is another reason not to fight as much in, in conquest, as, as long as you have many soldiers, you can just always capture quickly. Now, we've seen outside there was a tank. This is another reason to not go outside, just to stay inside. Because the outside has two points, the inside has three. You can theoretically play the whole game inside, completely ignore the outside, despite a couple of artillery strikes, which you get for free, and just win the game easily, because it's impossible. The enemy, If the enemy holds all the outside areas, it's two, we hold the inside areas, which is three, and we win. Also, if the enemy has a tank, good for us, because he has one infantry squad less. And if they have two tanks, they're gonna lose very likely, because then we're playing 10 infantry against eight, we have a 25% advantage. We have 25% more soldiers than they have, which is, gonna, which is basically an auto loss. So if both teams play really smart, Taking tanks and conquest just just go, it's just gonna make you lose, and I see they have two tanks and here and you we can actually win because we have the majority. Also, I'm just gonna blow up these tanks, and yeah, and everything is gonna be nice. <laughs> and these tanks are facing to the other direction, which is even better for us because if they would shell B constantly, we would have a, we we would completely would lose. We, it would it would be impossible to take B. But yeah, this is cool. This dude left the tank and instantly got the explosion. <laughs> yeah, and now time to actually drop a smart anti-tank mine because this is where the tanks are running around on their playground. Now, yeah, we are already catching up. And, well, strategically we have the, the advantage. Their line is burning. And they only have one position, which is their home position. And I'm about to take their, 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 their second home position, E. So yeah, this is looking good and it, it's possible to catch up. Alright, now since I'm alone and I need to capture, I'm gonna hide. I won't expose myself, I don't want to get a quick headshot. Now let's analyze. This is also quite a good message. In the beginning, the, the, the best enemy player was ahead of me by some kills. Now I'm basically twice as good as the best enemy player. But... Almost every enemy player is better. Basically, if you compare the enemy players to our players, yes, every single enemy player is better than our players. So, this is a bad thing. And we still only have two, three, oh wait, we have now possibly four rally point builders. 
and the enemies have possibly three. So yeah, this isn't looking that well for them. The only advantage they have is that they just they have a life advantage. Their line is still two and a half times as long as our line, which is painful. And you see the lines are the the this. Yeah, wait, let's go back. You see, we have A on the left. Ah, we have three ready points. Beautiful. And I think my ready point got destroyed. Or I built the ready point already inside. And one of the inside points on the left is mine. Yeah, we have three. I think the enemy only has one or two still. And yeah, this is, this is our position and now we have to win. Now let's take a moment to analyze. B is contested. And my, we have one squad on the right side that can possibly take care of E. I hope they manage to do so. Now, we can expect they won't because the enemies have on average much better, much more kills. So, in a one-on-one -on -one fight, the enemies will win. <laughs> so, this I sadly can't, can't take this for granted. On the left side though, we have one, two, possibly three squads. And now if, if I spawn there on the left, I could help them take B, but possibly they will do it. Then they will manage to do it themselves. Also, we already have B, so we need less squads to defend it than the enemy needs to capture it. So I can assume on the left side and B we have a slight advantage or enough of an advantage. On the right side, though, uh, the the one random squad that's running around there, possibly the two small squads are gonna get destroyed. So they need my help. And since the enemies most likely are gonna overcommit to B and C, I can I think that if I spawn on the right side, I'm gonna have a big advantage. So yeah, let's see. Yeah, I'm spawning on the right, whipping out a sword and start rushing. No. By the way, always keep in mind the the the, the timing for your artillery strikes. The the game should, by the way, have an in-game timer. So you don't have to think about it, it's a pain in the head, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, so you, I just, I usually play only one or two squads with, with Radio Man, because actually it's enough, it's, if you die, if you rotate your squads every four minutes, you, you actually, uh, if, if you, if you play like four, if you play three squads every four minutes, you always can take the, the, the one squad of the Radio Man, so yeah, one to two squads is absolute enough. And I actually forgot if I have artillery strike or not. All right, maybe I forgot it, or I didn't have the time, or I was uh, under attack. That's the that's the disadvantage. If you have if you don't have enough radio man, you won't. Sometimes you get killed, or he gets killed, and you can't call the strike. And then you have to wait, and you miss out on a whole bombing run, which is sad. But it's not. It's it's if the bombing run like not every bombing run is impactful. So. It doesn't mean that you lose too much. Uh, okay, now we have to take B, uh, D. We're, I'm already on D, but the enemy is stri artillery striking. You, you can see in the top left screen, there's a red circle on D. That's why I ran away. The red circle disappeared. And, well, since I see behind D, one of my teammates spawned. I guess it's uh, possibly a bot. Yeah, I guess my team was full of Yeah, it definitely was full of bots. The, 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 yeah, <laughs> I see two squads there doing nothing. They're just sitting in the gray zone. Yeah, that's why we were losing hard. That's why that's why we, we got spanked hard. We just we just have players who don't do anything. Okay, but running back isn't isn't smart. If you're already ahead, just go back forward and just go, keep going forward, because you can always spawn in the back, but you can't teleport yourself to the front. So it's like in chess if you have your your peasant soldiers and you want to put them as much fr front as possible so you can turn them into queens yeah this is exactly the same concept yeah uh, i'm alone here and the 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 the, sc the score was 50 50 so i can assume there was exactly one enemy soldier now i hoped he wouldn't emerge behind me but he did so yeah i bad for me but happens and now all of the strategical advantages we discussed are gone <laughs> because yeah it looks actually worse than it was before because we had yeah they, they took overtook the strategical advantage they have more positions and now they don't have two two and a half as much life now they have four times as much life as we have and if your lifeline it becomes too short 
not even having all of the all of the objectives will help you because every time you die, every time you respawn, your line gets shorter. And if they if we have two little lives left, they can just start killing us and uh, drain our line that way. So yeah, now we're in a very very extremely bad position. Now they have five times as much life. This is getting ridiculous. This is getting ridiculous. But yeah, we're capturing E and we're capturing B. Now we absolutely have to succeed in doing that. We have to get B and we have to get E. And we have to stop dying and we have to start killing lots of enemies. You see, the only way to win is succeeding in almost basically everything that, we, that the team failed the whole time. <laughs> So this, by the way, another important thing about playing good or doing anything good in life. Only focus on how you win, not on how you lose. Because focusing on how you lose is A, a waste of mental energy that you can't afford. Because if you are already losing, you already you, yeah, you obviously <laughs> lack ideas how to win. So you absolutely need ideas how to win. Also, if you think about losing, your brain starts excluding thoughts that lead to winning and only focuses on negative negative pitching so you want to stay away from that it's like poison so yeah uh, i was thinking about how to win and yeah this was the plan getting e getting b and starting to starting to attack them because we need to kill as many of them as possible s s preferably from a position where we don't die as often so i'm gonna stay here and see where we literally have the high ground and I hope the enemies attack so I can get lots of kills and I'm gonna stay keep my, my soldiers safe so they don't die which is well a hard task if you get rushed by infinite amounts of enemies <laughs> now I think I lost like six soldiers and I killed nine or even more soldiers so that was uh, that was okay now you see the lines are burning down well, the enemy still has four times as much, yeah, but they're not burning down proportionally. We have a slight advantage. All right, and you see we have a big squad again, seven-man squad, and I'm capturing. And now, even despite the artillery strike on us, I just still kept capturing because if I run away from the strike, I won't capture and our line's gonna burn down and the enemy's not. So we need to risk it, we need to risk that we so we need just to hope that we survive the artillery strike. And it worked out. We also actually survived the strike. Every soldier survived. And now we have the majority. And I think we have it since like three or four minutes. And we are killing the enemy's heart. Do you see how quickly the line burns down? Let's repeat. This is one minute back. Or 30 seconds back. By the way, let's analyze. Enemies still have three ready points, and look at our Engineer score, we have four, and our killing score got better. Now, I'm better than the best enemy. My second is better than the enemy, second. The third is the... Okay, the third... Okay. Our top two players are better now than the enemy top two players. And this is where we started getting better. And you see the kills also got similar. Yeah, so in the last five minutes, my team started playing much better than they played before. Much, much better. Which is what is saving us. So yeah, look at the top line, you can literally see how it burns. Yeah, look, you see how it gets shorter and shorter for the enemies. This is our our team killing them. This is our team killing them and them respawning and draining their life. Yes. And now, okay, now we can okay, now we have to put yes. And now you see we got the we got ahead. We got ahead and we keep killing them and now it's just now it's just uh, yeah. We are literally winning and now we have the advantage and it's over. This is hardcore close. This was hardcore close. Now, if you want to see the magic, just repeat the last four or five minutes of the video where you see how the enemies had four times as much life as we had. And by absolutely perfect place, we completely turned around the match. Yeah, we completely turned around the match by being not only technically perfect, quite perfect, but strategically perfect and this is the important thing if if i had done worse strategic decisions you would have lost this was super close and the most important thing was that led us to the win 
was that A, I kept up rally points the whole time. I destroyed rally points whenever I could. Well, at least I hoped I messed up, but <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Uh, and whenever I saw something is bad, for example, I saw enemies are spawning too much on one side or enemies are blocking our doors, I either destroyed the enemy barbed wire or I just avoided the enemy opposition and just attacked where the enemy is weak. Yeah? So I didn't expose myself, I didn't run outside when it didn't make any sense, I only went outside when it made sense and I always kept pushing the enemy's weak spot or the spot with the biggest payoff for us. And... By managing these decisions, where you attack and where you don't attack, and where you retreat to counter-attack in a better spot, this is how you get ahead. Because most of the time, the enemy was ahead of us, significantly. But by doing great strategic decisions, we worked up. We worked ourselves up to an advantages over all position, and pulled off one of the closest win ever. So yeah, that was a great game. If you enjoyed it too, drop a like. And subscribe and ask me your questions if you have any or just tell whatever you think. I always like hearing your thoughts. Until next time and have great Halloween, the best, possibly the coolest holiday in the year.